Judaism claims to have an oral tradition that dates all the way back to Sinai. It includes teachings, interpretations, and rulings on every aspect of Torah. But did this come from Sinai, or is it a much later edition invented by the rabbis after the destruction of the temple? Well, I'm glad you asked because this is our topic for this week's 5-Minute Torah. Welcome back, Torah Tribe. You're watching the channel that connects disciples of Yeshua to the eternal Torah of God. It's great to have you here with us today. This week's Torah portion is the portion of Devarim, Deuteronomy 1, 1 through 3, 22. And here are the three things that you need to know about it. Number one, the last discourse of Moses. Devarim begins with Moses delivering a series of speeches to the children of Israel, reflecting on their journey in the wilderness and recounting significant events from their past. Moses reiterates key moments such as the appointment of leaders, the sending of spies into the Promised Land, and the rebellion at Kadesh Barnea. This section emphasizes the importance of the Israelites remembering their history, learning from past mistakes, and reinforcing the covenant between them and God. Number two, lessons from the wilderness. The rabbis tell us that some of the place names this Torah portion begins with are not to be taken literally, especially since we haven't heard of some of them before now. They are veiled rebukes against the children of Israel for their sins in the wilderness. One of these names, De Zahav, is mentioned nowhere else in all of Scripture. De Zahav means too much gold. Can you guess what incident it might be referring to? And number three, the mystery of the spies. The book of Numbers seems to say that the 12 spies were sent out by the Lord's command. However, in this week's Torah reading, we hear an alternative perspective that says that the children of Israel asked to spy out the land and the Lord allowed them to. Your homework is to find out why there seems to be a discrepancy here. Enjoy. The 5-Minute Torah is an indispensable resource that every disciple of Yeshua should proudly own. Within its pages lies a treasure trove of condensed wisdom, carefully curated to fit into the busy lives of modern seekers. With insightful and concise teachings, this book transforms the often daunting task of Torah study into an accessible and enriching experience. You can pick up your copy using the link in the description box below this video. Your purchases help support the continued development of new videos for this channel. Thank you in advance. This week's Torah commentary is called Moses and the Rabbis and comes from my book, 5-Minute Torah, Volume 2. Our portion begins the final book of the Torah, the book of Deuteronomy. Sometimes the book of Deuteronomy is also known as Mishnah Torah, or the repetition of Torah, since it contains a recap of many of the major themes included in the previous books of the Torah. It also begins by recounting the various events that have taken place among the children of Israel since the Exodus. A curious statement is made, however, that we must explore. Beyond the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses undertook to explain this law, this Torah, saying... This is Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 5. The children of Israel had wandered in the wilderness for the last 40 years and had now made it to the land of Moab on the east side of the Jordan. But rather than immediately sending them over, Moses stops and begins to explain some important details of the Torah. What were those details? Well, that's a really good question. Many people make the mistake of thinking that every detail of the Torah's instructions is spelled out within the Torah itself. However, We have plenty of examples of why this cannot be the case. The most obvious is that of the Shabbat, the Sabbath. For instance, the Lord commanded the children of Israel to keep the Sabbath, and that anyone who profanes the Sabbath shall be put to death, Exodus 31, 14 through 15. However, the Torah does not provide any details of what types of work are considered to violate the Sabbath. Since the elders of Israel are responsible for trying cases such as this to determine if the crime is worthy of such a serious decree as the death penalty, it becomes immediately apparent that the definitions of work and profaning the Sabbath are critical in judging the outcome of such cases. Two questions immediately arise. First, what constitutes work and who has the authority to interpret the definition of work? 
In other words, does each person have the ability to determine what has worked for themselves, or is there a common standard established that all of Israel must adhere to? Details and decisions like this had to be made clear to the Israelites before Moses departed. As we can see alluded to here in our portion, these details are explained to the children of Israel in verse 5, reminding them that the heads of the tribes had been given charge of making legal rulings on his behalf under the leadership of Joshua. See verses 19 through 18. And that since their authority was given to them by Moses, it also came from Sinai, so to speak, as recorded in Perkei Avot. Moses received the Torah from Sinai and transmitted it to Joshua. Joshua to the elders, the elders to the prophets, and the prophets transmitted it to the men of the great assembly. This is Perkei Avot 1.1. These legal decisions were at first recorded orally and then eventually written down at a much later date. They were passed down from one generation to the next in order to equip the leaders among the people of Israel. The oral law, or the Mishnah as it has come to be known today, therefore is the compilation of legal decisions and case precedents passed down from generation to generation beginning with the time of Moses. Before it was ever written down, however, it was taught orally from teacher to student in order that it remain flexible but not be forgotten. After the destruction of the Second Temple during the Roman period, it became important for this information to be collected and committed to writing so that it not be lost. This compilation has served as a collective repository of these oral transmissions ever since. It's a critical component of Judaism, detailing the specifics of how the Torah is to be lived out and determining the legal definitions of what it means to either break or fulfill the commandments found within the Torah. The Torah was given as the skeleton, initially lacking in many details how it is to be observed. It is the job of the rulers of Israel to put flesh on it by explaining how it is to be lived out. This is why Yeshua can confidently say the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so do and observe whatever they tell you, Matthew 23, 2 and 3. The scribes and Pharisees in the days of Yeshua would eventually become the rabbis of the Mishnah and the Talmud. Do they disagree with the decisions of Yeshua and the apostles? Occasionally, but not very often. We have to remember that sometimes lower courts and higher courts disagree but it's always the higher court's ruling that stands. Even though the higher court may come to different conclusions than the lower courts, it does not disband the lower courts, but trusts them to handle rulings until the time is needed for it to intervene. Yeshua entrusted the leaders of Israel to continue leading his people in his absence, with the ultimate authority lying with him and his apostles. The next time we casually dismiss something as being rabbinic, Let's remember that if Moses had to expound on the Torah to make it viable for those living in his day, how much more so do we need exposition of its principles today by those who have been entrusted with its wisdom? Thanks for joining me each week for these five-minute Torah insights. Do you want to grow in your understanding of the scriptures, maybe the contextual polemics of Paul, the Hebrew language, or simply how to be a better disciple of Yeshua? If so, you'll want to check out my latest video, Five Books That Changed My Life, right here. Want to help me grow this channel so that more people can experience great Messianic teachings? Then please share this video and give it a thumbs up. I'll see you again soon with another Messianic insight into the eternal Torah of God. Blessings from Amet Torah.